was the most defining moment of your life, Mark? Again, it can be personal or professional. Um, well, on April 2nd, 2012, mm -hmm. um, life kind of took a drastic turn for me. I was actually on my way back from the Final Four Okay. Um, with my two of my three best friends. Um, and I got the phone call that no parent ever wants to receive, and that's that your daughter's been involved in a car accident. Wow. And it, and it actually happened one of the worst ways that you could have it sort of happen because it was her phone mm -hmm. calling me. And um, it was the officer that was pulling her out of the car. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, is this Mr. Parrish? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, um, your daughter's been involved in an accident and it's, and it's really bad. Mm. And so that was a Monday. Um, and I was, I had never ever experienced what it was like to be stuck in traffic and where you just can't get somewhere. And I mean, that was sort of my first example of like what powerless truly means. Mm -hmm. um, I eventually made it to Nashville where my daughter was stat flighted to Vanderbilt. Wow. And um, six days later, she actually died on Easter morning. And so, mm -hmm. April 8th. And so that was six years ago, crazy mm -hmm. as that is, but um, that that moment was the decider whether or not I'm going to either quit life or keep going. Mm -hmm. And there was I, I I became in touch with feelings I'd never had before. Mm -hmm. One is I'd never really experienced trauma. I'd never seen what trauma really was. I, I'd heard people describe what trauma was like, but down in the hospital it's open OR, so like you can just see trauma everywhere you look. There's no way to escape it. Mm -hmm. So you weren't in your own room. Right. You're basically in an open OR with eight other patients and you're watching what they're going through with head injuries, all kinds of, and then the helicopters would land up, you know, where we were because we were in the top floor of the hospital. So they land on the helipad and you could hear the helicopters and so lots of triggers. Um, so I understand triggers a whole lot better. Okay. I actually became a better counselor that day. Um, and and I, the experience of powerlessness when your daughter's laying in a bed and every bone, every cell in your body wants to get into that bed so that your daughter can go live a life, you want to do that. And mm -hmm. I just wasn't able to, you know, I, I, I made deals with God. I said, look, I will, I will give up the practice. I will do it, whatever it takes. Sure. And it just, you know, it just wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. And so I think I was in a fog for about a year, okay. um, quite honestly. And then something shifted and, and I decided that you know, I had to live a life a different way. And so okay. I, I made a decision, simplistically, you know, I've worked with anxiety and depression my entire career. Simplistically, anxiety takes you into the future, mm -hmm. worrying about what if and what worries about the future. Depression takes you backwards okay. into what's happened and I wish this wouldn't have happened and I kind of dwell on losses or pain that I had in the past. So my task and my goal and what I would encourage everyone that's watching this to do is to live in the precious present. Mm -hmm. It's the only place that Amen. you can live freely. Amen. And that's what I'm doing with you. You know, it's, mm -hmm. I want to be fully present with you and, and I have to transition and do that in my office every day. And I, I want to be present with the person at 10 o'clock and then I have to disengage and be present with the person at 11. Mm -hmm.